It'll be one to go this time by. Coming to the green, buddy. Coming to the green. Let's go get him. Go, go, go. Dig, dig, dig. Go, 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 go. Get your motor running. Head out on the highway. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by, and welcome to the NASCAR CAM video teleconference. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. In a few minutes, we will conduct a question and answer session. Instructions on procedure will be given at that time. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded. I would now like to turn the conference over to our host, NASCAR's Denise Maloof. Denise, go ahead. Thank you, Jamie. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series video teleconference, as Jamie said. This week, it's ahead of Saturday night's Bank of America 500 at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Our guest today is two-time series champion Tony Stewart, driver of the number 20 Home Depot Toyota, who's one of 12 drivers competing in the 2008 chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Tony is seventh in the chase standing. More importantly, he's fresh off last Sunday's victory at Talladega Super Speedway, and he's hoping to make it two in a row this week. Tony, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. After uh, such a significant win, what are your thoughts heading to uh, race number five in the chase this weekend? Uh, just a lot of excitement finally we um, you know it's been a little over 12 months since we won a race so uh, to to get our first one of the year this year and uh, of all places to get it at Talladega which is one of four tracks that we hadn't won a cup race at uh, in our career uh, to finally get that first cup win at Talladega and the first one for the year uh, was a, a, a huge huge day for us yesterday so uh, you know going into this weekend uh, here in Charlotte uh, obviously, it's uh, you know a lot of momentum that, that hopefully we can carry, and uh, at least uh, you know on Monday here we're all smiling and and uh, we had a day that everything went our way. Before we begin with the media questions, I know that you're one of several people in the sport who's participating in Wednesday's Jail and Bell charity event for the Brian Davis Scholarship uh, Fund, and that's at the Brick House Tavern in Davis, North Carolina. I'm sure you can drum up some uh, bail for this fundraiser, which I know is <laughs> a lot of you. Oh, I've got a. I've got a big list. Uh, the part that scares me is I'm scared people aren't going to want to help bail me out just to keep me in jail a little longer. But uh, it's a great event. Um, you know, I know uh, the big list of NASCAR officials that uh, are passionate about the Brian Davis Foundation and uh, doing this in Brian's memory. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I, I am a, a partner in the Brick House Tavern, so uh, I know the preparations that have gone into this event, and uh, it should be a lot of fun for everybody that shows up. There's going to be some great bands, and uh, uh, we're going to have a pretty good time. So uh, if you want to come there and, and have some good laughs, uh, it's going to be a good day on Wednesday. Sounds good. Let's go straight to media questions for Tony Stewart. Thank you. The question and answer session will be conducted electronically. If you wish to ask a question, you may do so by pressing the star key, followed by the digit 1 on your touchstone telephone. If you're using a speakerphone, please make sure your mute function is turned off so your signal can reach your equipment. Once again, that is star one to ask a question, and we'll pause for just a moment to escape. We'll take our first question today from Jenna Fryer with the Associated Press. Hey, Tony. Um, congratulations on the win, and I, I hate to bring up the last lap pass right away, but I was at the driver meeting in 2001 when, when they first announced that, and you were the first driver, you know, sort of caught going below the yellow line and punished for it, and I'm pretty sure I've been at every driver meeting ever since, and, and I've never heard them say, on the last lap, anything goes, you can go below the yellow line to pass, but yet a handful of drivers yesterday said they interpreted the rule that way. You and Zippy did not seem to interpret it that way, so I was hoping you could just explain to me what you think the rule is. I've been a part of every one of the drivers' meetings since they've implemented the the yellow line rule, and uh, they've all they always say, and it always starts with this is your warning: do not improve your position be it below the yellow line. If you are passing a car and you're under the yellow line, back off and fall back behind the car that you're trying to pass, and and you won't be penalized. Um, you know, I had that same penalty that that Regan got yesterday, so I. I can sympathize with him because I've been there, and like you said, I was the first guy that got black flag because of passing under the yellow line, and I was only two tires under the yellow line. Uh, but the drivers' meetings have been very clear on that uh, from day one, and it's you do not pass for position, and you cannot improve your position by passing a car under the yellow line. 
and the, it's, they've never wavered in, in the, the terminology that they've used or the language that they've used. It's always been the same every week. And, uh, you know, yesterday was a situation that I knew as long as I protected myself on the bottom that, that we were in good shape. I mean, there's, it wasn't that it was a one-lane road and that he didn't have anywhere else to go. Uh, you know, there's plenty of racetrack there, but, uh, you know, I, I feel bad for him because it, it was the race of his life yesterday. And, uh, like I say, I sympathize uh, from his standpoint. And, and it's frustrating when you know that at, at the very least you should have finished second. Uh, but to, to get the one lap penalty like that and be at the tail end of the lead lap, uh, it, it's hard to swallow when you leave. But that's the rule. That's the way it's always been. Uh, they've always been very clear about that. And, and you know, I've, had, I've been in positions where I've had to make that decision, uh, and, and you hate it. It, it. it takes so much discipline to say, I know that if I go ahead and continue this pass, that I'm going to get black flag for it. And it's hard to make yourself drop back in that position and then try again, and especially on the last lap. I mean, that was what was so frustrating for us at Daytona when we got that penalty. But, uh, you know, it, it's there for a reason, and it's been consistent ever since day one that they've had that yellow line rule, and NASCAR's never wavered from that. So um, there was, if, if anybody thought that they had any question on interpretation, you know, NASCAR asked you at the end of the driver's meeting if anybody has any questions. and. And uh, you know, if they if they had a question about the interpretation, uh, they should have asked. That's the time to do it. You've never ever heard any inkling that you can do anything goes on the last lap. No, <laughs> they've never said that. I mean, uh, I I think for years there's always been somebody from the media that that records the drivers' meetings and. Uh, you can go back in every one of those meetings, and David Hoots, who uh, conducts our drivers' meetings on Sunday morning, has never said that. There's uh, somebody brought the question up in the media center last night that they thought that if you could see the the uh, the, the flagman, uh, anything goes at that point. They've never said that. Uh, if that were the case, you'd have guys lying and saying in turn one on the last lap that they could see the start finish line and see the flagman. So. Uh, but that's never been said from NASCAR's standpoint. They've, been, they've always been very clear that you cannot improve your position by passing under the yellow line. And, and it's, uh, if you interpret that any different than that, I, I, you're more creative than I am because I can't. Uh, I don't know how it could be spelled out more plainly than that. Thank you.